So we got impeachment week starting now. This is when all of a sudden things start to happen out in the open. You'll see Democrats engaged in all kinds of grandstanding. It'll be wall-to-wall coverage by a lot of the news networks. The people who are at the top of the news hierarchy in many ways are having a Watergate tingle here. Ooh, Watergate. This is, this is when journalism can reassert itself. You see, Trump has been a challenge, a direct challenge, an affront, really, in their eyes, to the journalistic establishment. In fact, I would argue that that's one of the defining characteristics of his presidency, his willingness to call them fake news, to say what they really are, and not to back down when they claim, oh, it's basically violence, oh, how could he say these things about us? It's terrible. Well, it turns out the President of the United States can't be bullied by the media, or can't be persuaded, he can't be uh, bought off quite as easily as other Republicans in the past, that's for sure. I'm not saying opinion doesn't matter to him in the media. Sometimes I worry this president does read a little too much from, say, Maggie Haberman in the New York Times. I think he cares more than he should, but he cares a lot less than any of his predecessors, that is for sure. But the journalistic establishment sees this as an opportunity to reassert its role in American life, which for decades we've been told is to speak truth to power, to unearth that which the corrupt, uh, the oppressive want to hide. That's what journalism has told us it is all about for my entire life, and I'm sure for the lives of some of you listening who are quite a bit older than me. That's what they've been teaching people in journalism schools. This is what they say about themselves, unironically, mind you, on TV on a regular basis. And now is their chance to get no small degree of revenge against this president who has challenged their sense of who they are, their professions, yes, but also their role in American society and and their role in our day-to-day lives. Journalists are enraged at this president because he has pointed out that there is no special sect of our fellow Americans who are the the honest, the just, the the true journalists. They 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 don't exist. There's part there are partisans, there are activists, there are people who do everything that they can in order to push certain agendas. But if they can get rid of this president, like they got rid of Reagan, which I would I'm sorry, <laughs> they got rid of Nixon. They wish they could have gotten rid of Reagan as they pushed uh, Nixon out. Not that Nixon didn't give them plenty to work with. He certainly did. But that would be a a restoration in their minds to the old order, the way things are supposed to be. And so I just want to prepare you for, for those of you who are going to be watching some of the mainstream coverage, or just it'll come up on your computer screens or on your smartphones as you're scanning through the news. Hopefully you just listen to this show and drown out much of that worthless noise. But if you do see it, I want you to be prepared for dishonesty on a level that will be truly mind-blowing for activism and partisanship from people who are telling you as they are trying to persuade you to go against a Republican president that they are not doing this because of any animus against the president or against the Republican Party or conservatism. They're doing this out of love of country because Trump has violated the Constitution. And then you could do what I do and say, what part of the Constitution exactly has he violated? Can you just point to what he has violated in the Constitution? If they're going to use the most broad designations possible, oh, he has failed to faithfully conduct his uh, office responsibilities. Like how? With a conversation that I have not heard a single credible lawyer say was a criminal act. Not one. How exactly is the President of the United States violating the Constitution? They won't have a good answer. They will just, they will yell at you, though. They will make it clear that you're a bad person if you don't agree with them. Like those lunatics who were screaming in my face last week as I was on the way to a social event. They will yell, they will scream, they will shriek. The Democrats are very, very angry. In fact, there's some polling that I will get to later in the show proves the Democrats really have lost their minds. I mean, this is now far too commonplace. People that identify with that ideology and with the culture of the Democratic Party don't have the tap the brakes mode anymore. They can't can't do it. Can't pull it off. They, they can't chill out. They are too frenzied around all of this stuff. Perhaps because they have Democrat candidates for the presidency 
telling them that the world is going to end in 10 years unless we listen to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and institute the Green New Deal. Only dishonest or stupid people can believe that. But there are a lot of dishonest people and unfortunately even more stupid people. (laughs) 